So I'm going to uh, ask our veterans to move to a more comfortable seat. And can we give them one more round of applause as they do that?
The Bible states, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15, 13. My name is Ricky Mills, and I'm here to talk to you today about Veterans Day and why it should be important to you. I'm going to talk a little bit about when I grew up in Jordan Elbridge, what time in the Army over the last 20 years, and finally, about what Veterans Day means to me and why you should thank veterans when you see them, especially during this time of year. By show of hands, does anybody know where Jordan Elbridge is? Yeah, it's only about an hour from here. So we drove down here this morning. It's not much different than Marathon. It's a little bigger, but our auditorium is <laughs> comparable. I went to Jordan Elbridge Elementary, the bus that took my nieces, Brittany, and Erica to school. This is exactly the same bus that drives kids to school 30 years ago. Both the towns of Elbridge and Jordan look exactly as they did 30 years ago. When I was a little boy running around, playing with my friends, riding my bike through town. I remember going to Jordan Pool during the summer and going swimming and going to Science Hill and sledding down Science Hill in the winter. I graduated from Jordan Overch High School in 1989. I was an average student. I got B's and C's on my report cards. Once in a while, though, I could scratch out an A when I studied really hard. But what I learned from getting those A's was after putting forth just a little bit more effort and hard work, was that if I put enough effort into something, I could do anything. Like many of you, physical fitness has always been important to me. I wrestled in high school. I wasn't that good, but I wrestled in high school. <laughs> and I participated in ski club one year. Both of those sports helped me later in my military career. And the values that Coach Fruit instilled in us back then still stand strong today. Hard work, discipline, motivation, and integrity. For as long as I can remember though, all I have ever wanted to do since I was born was be a soldier. My father served, my uncle served, my grandfather served. Some of my fondest memories were looking at my father's 8 millimeter slides. If you don't know what that is, that's one of those round reels with these little square things. You could press the button, it would make that wild thing like choo -choo, choo -choo, and it would like slide the thing up. My father used to pull that out every once in a while and roll through them. From his time in the Army and going to the VFW or American Legion with my grandfather, Robert O'Connor, or play pool, to play pool while he sat and talked with the other veterans. My best memories, though, are of sitting around and listening to the men tell stories about what they did in the far off places they went to. It's still one of my favorite things to do. Even after doing 20 years in the military. That was when I learned that there were other places in the world than Jordan Overge, New York State, or even the United States of America. Places called Germany, Japan, Korea, and Vietnam. Some of you may have heard of these places and the stories of your grandfathers, and some of you may have heard of other places like Afghanistan or Iraq from your fathers or relatives or family friends who were veterans themselves. I joined the Army on July 26, 1989, right after I left high school. I told the recruiter that I wanted to be in the woods a lot and I wanted to jump out of planes. He was a very happy recruiter. He said, I got a job for you. What I remember the most about joining the Army was feeling that I was doing something bigger than myself. I was volunteering to serve my country and do whatever I was asked to do, no matter what. I wanted to defend America, my religion, my family, my country, and my way of life, our way of life, from the people that I had heard about and the stories of my grandfather and father. I spent 20 years in the Army serving with some of the best men and women America has. They came from every state in the United States, and they all looked and talked differently when we first started. Black, white, brown, yellow, red, any color of your skin, 
or gender did not matter. We were all green, army green. We were all proud of what we were doing. Your value was measured in your hard work, discipline, motivation, and integrity. Remember where I got those words? We did not necessarily like everything we did, but we did it for the betterment of the men and women to our left and right. Some of the people that I served with became the best of friends and will remain so for the rest of my life. We understand each other. Veterans Day to me is a day to remember the sacrifices that men and women that already have served, are serving right now, and will serve our country and the future make during every day that they are in uniform. I think that it's important to start by defining the word sacrifice as it means to me. A lot of people associate the word sacrifice with joining and serving in the military without really thinking about what that service costs men and women who serve. Sacrifice is not always about being in the service and being in uniform. Sacrifice is not always about being away from home, traveling to different countries and defending freedom and liberty in foreign countries. In most cases, the men and women who served are proud of where they have been and what they have done. They may not talk about that in the presence of other people. In most cases, veterans are quiet people, sticking to themselves and preferring not to talk about what they have done to defend this great nation, unless they are with other veterans, who they know really understand and will not judge them. Sacrifice is more importantly defined as the number of days a soldier, sailor, airman, marine misses out on the special things that his family does while they are gone serving. Serving you. Here are a few examples of the things that we miss when we are gone. Days, weeks, maybe months away from wives and children. Miss birthdays, holidays, anniversaries, graduations. Miss lacrosse games, baseball games, wrestling matches, and football games. Missing your kids grow one to two inches and mature during an entire summer or winter or both. Missing dance recitals, weddings, and family or friends' births, deaths, and burials. As an example, when I was in Bosnia at Old Dark 30, I got a phone call that my grandfather had passed away. I had three Special Forces ODAs under my command at that time, broken down, and we were chasing terrorists, Euro European terrorists, the same terrorists that bombed and blew up the buses and the train stations in Spain and Britain. I was not leaving my man. I called my father, and I told my father, my grandfather knows that I love him, and I'll see my grandfather when I get home. Every service member gives away their freedoms in order to preserve yours. They get up early every day, before you wake up most of the time, and if they get to sleep, it is often in some uncomfortable, wet, and dark place. When I was in the Rangers, our motto was, we do more before 9 o'clock than most people do in the world on a daily basis. <laughs> I loved every single day I was in the Army. And I would go back in defense of this country again tomorrow if I had to. What we did not understand back then was that we were losing or giving away pieces of ourselves. Another, again, another example. When I returned from Iraq, I actually finally linked up with my family. I had four children. At that time, my twins were very young, maybe two or three. My twins did not recognize me. I had, I actually hugged my son and hugged my son and my daughter who remembered who I was and my twins were afraid of me. They actually cried and they didn't want me to hold them. It took time for them to actually realize that I was their father. A few days. That's a piece of me that I'll never get back. I retired from the Army 13 years ago on 31 October 2009. I spent 30 years away from my home 
my friends, and my family. The kids are older now, but I am looking forward to never having to say goodbye to my wife, except to go hunting. <laughs> so the next time you see a veteran, say thank you. Don't look at him from a distance and want to say thank you, or maybe wish you had later. Don't be ashamed or bashful. Get up and walk over and shake his or her hand and just say it. Say thank you for your service to the veteran and let them know you understand their sacrifice. Thank you. Give Mr. Mills another round of applause for